Hey guys, what's going on? It is Filmington. In today's video, we are going to talk about why people use vaulting services. First, starting out with a background, I have been vaulting my cards with only alt for the better part of the last two years. I'm currently in the midst of transitioning some of those assets, as alt likes to call them, to uh, another platform looking into eBay as well as collectors. So... The point of this video is to get into some of the advantages, uh, but first we'll start off with some of the drawbacks maybe. You know, somebody like me, and like many of you I'm sure, like to see your cards every once in a while, like to maybe touch them, feel them, hold them, show them off, bring them to shows, bring them to trade nights maybe, bring them to the national. Uh, it's not ideal to have your cards stored in a vault for those purposes, but there are a number of reasons why people use them. People saying, generally, people these aren't all my motivations, and you'll kind of see why as I go through these. But the number one benefit, in my opinion, is safe storage. A lot of insurance companies require you to take a certain amount of preventative measures or precautionary measures to keep these things safe, uh, tucked away. For instance, like a 100-pound safe that's not bolted to your wall. Uh, that's probably not going to do it. You're probably not going to get a certain discount on your insurance. You might not even get covered from your insurance if you do something like that. And there's a number of issues that could still happen with theft and all sorts of stuff. If you're to store your cards in a bank vault, uh, I have Bank of America. <laughs> Don't judge me. Yeah, I'd assume there'd be a higher risk for fire or water damage at the bank I use versus an actual vault that's purpose built to store collectibles and high value items. So you've got this like quasi insurance and safe storage aspect. Uh, a lot of people probably look at it as an alternative to buying insurance, storing your stuff at a vault. Uh, number two, if you're already doing a lot of business with this company, most of the vaults nowadays have marketplaces and they've got other ancillary or adjacent services that can provide. So if you're already doing a lot of business or buying and selling with these companies, then it probably makes sense to use their vault because when you sell it, you might end up selling it through that same platform anyway. So why not just keep it there and take advantage of the security, the efficiency, and all sorts of other advantages, um, which lead us to number three. A lot of people use vaults because they, it allows you to borrow or kind of take out leverage on behalf. Think, uh, I heard this from AIH's channel from P. Ryan Collection. The margin requirements have changed. You now have to post a higher amount of collateral. So in, in the past where maybe you could borrow 50% of the value of the cards that were housed in the vault. Uh, and every vault is gonna be different here. But in the past where the requirements were a little more lax, now they're pretty restrictive and um, you're gonna need to post more cards or higher value cards in order to take out that same amount. Number four is gonna be the transactional convenience. So got into this a little bit, but if you're not the type of person that likes to go to the post office and buy shipping and packing supplies and print shipping labels, um, also taking pictures and staging the cards, from an efficiency perspective, you can make out by using a vault. Um, some of these will also offer lower fees. Fee structures are all very different across them, but in some cases you can get lower transaction fees than what you'd get through eBay. So all rolls into the transactional convenience. Number five, so here's where it starts to get a bit sketchy. Um, a lot of people use vaults to avoid sales tax, actually better said evade <laughs> sales tax. Um, some of the vaulting companies do a better job than others disclosing to you in like plain language upfront where it's clear and noticeable on their website or, or in their terms and conditions that once you ship the card home from the vault, you have to pay sales tax on it. So say if you bought a card from eBay and you had it shipped to a vault, the vaults, most of them are based in sales tax free states like Oregon and Delaware. Um, you can avoid sales tax on eBay by having a shipping address that has one of those two states attached to it. But, you know, the, the rule is the sales tax laws state that 
You then have to pay sales tax if you live, if your residence is in a sales tax state, once you get that shipped to you. So whether it's two months later, two days later, or two years later, after that transaction occurs, once you pull that card out, you're supposed to remit sales tax to the state for that original transaction. There's a lot of people that are probably taking advantage of this. I'm not advising that you do. I'm just putting it out there that it's a reason why people use vaults. This isn't why I use a vault. This is why generally people are incentivized to use vaults. You know, there's not a whole lot of content out on this and I kind of understand why. And the only reason why I'm making this video now is because the next thing I bring up, which is even more sketchy, is something that you can't take advantage of anymore because I don't want my audience to, <clears throat> to really be taking advantage of these things. Uh, don't get yourself in trouble. Definitely work with an accountant. Have an accountant, hire an accountant, and they can guide you through some of these things. This is not professional tax advice. I'm not a CPA. I'm not an accountant. Um, so yeah, there goes all the responsibility for me, deflecting it to, to you. Uh, okay, so number six. This one is interesting. And this is almost the impetus for making a video. It really is. Um, I believe based on what I know about these platforms and how they've operated in the past, that people have used vaults to, we talked about evading or avoiding, <laughs> really it's evading state sales tax or deferring it. Um, people are using vaults also, I believe, to evade income tax on gains from sales. So it's always gonna be easier to hide income from the IRS if they have no data on the sales. And this is one of the reasons why people used consignment companies in the past, like a Probstein or PWCC, uh, when they were attached to eBay. Basically, the vaults like PWCC, Alt, etc., they allow you to keep a cash balance on their platform. And you can keep this cash balance for long periods of time. So if you're familiar with ComC, COMC, however you're supposed to say it, if you're familiar with ComC, it's sort of similar where you can keep like a store credit or store balance. And it, it almost incentivizes you as a customer to keep minimal documentation, not do a whole lot of record keeping maybe, but there could be multiple years worth of purchases and sales and rolling over those funds to buy stuff that you're using money that you sold stuff from in the past. You're using proceeds from sales a year ago, two months ago, two years ago. Um, and you're using that money to continue to buy and sell and flip and buy and sell. It's hard to trace what our cost basis is when we finally sell something. Like, how are you going to be able to understand what your cost basis was by not doing a whole lot of record keeping because you're just flipping stuff on the site and not really withdrawing cash for. So same holds true for these vaults. I have item A, it went up in value. I have it with say golden. I sell it for a gain. I keep that cash on the platform and I buy item B and that goes up and I sell that. And then I use those proceeds to buy item C and then that goes up. So eventually, you know, in an uptrending market, this is where it's gonna be the most relevant and we're not in this anymore. So this is mostly for like the past. <laughs> and also there's something else I'm about to mention, but it's nearly impossible for the IRS, starting with them not getting itemized transaction information or sale information like they are with eBay and them relying on the person that's submitting their records to the IRS, relying on that bookkeeping to understand like what's really, like how much do they really owe? What are really those capital gains, right? So there has been a recent change with some of the auction houses, such as I think Golden and PWCC, where 1099s are coming in 2023 for calendar year this year, 2022. So this advantage goes away, which could be partially to blame for the high-end prices kind of going down and collapsing, um, some high-end Tom Brady cards. A lot of other reasons why. I know leverage is another reason. Uh, this is actually brought up by Ziggy No the first time I'd heard it like six months ago, theorizing that there are going to be a lot of margin calls and high-end was at high risk to collapse. AIH has since covered that, and that is definitely a bigger reason why. I get it, but this whole income tax, gaming, manipulation, hiding records, manipulating records, not possessing enough records to allow that taxpayer to pay the correct amount. So 
some of this could be intentional and some of it could just be because of ignorance. Maybe they just didn't know what their cost basis was. So I guess the question is now in 2023, when these 1099s come out, are they going to be itemized or are they just going to show the withdrawals? Are they going to be based on the withdrawals that were pulled from these sites? Or are they going to truly show all of the sales that occurred in 2022 for all the different lots listings they call them lots and auction houses um are those all going to show up as separate transactions so that if that's the case then it's all funds over if that's not the case there could be still some ability to manipulate the books a little bit uh but still either way it's a step in the right direction for the irs to steal more money from americans <laughs> Hopefully this was informative. Let me know if there's any other benefits of people using vaults. Um, I know I kind of got sidetracked a bit by the uh, the tax pieces, but let me know your thoughts on, on all of these. And these are all, again, just general observations. These aren't things that I'm taking advantage of or else I wouldn't be making this video. All right, guys, that is it. Filmington out. Thank you.